Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I am gonna go over seven reasons why this car was not made for winter conditions. I know people drive these in the winter, I just can't believe nobody else is talking about these problems. Maybe I'm the only one having these problems, I don't know. Seems unlikely, but here are seven reasons why the Tesla Model X sucks in the winter. And if you stick around to the very end, I'll have one positive thing to say. <laughs> I posted about this before, complaining how just a slight amount of snow just caked over the entire car and the doors wouldn't open, windows wouldn't move. So now I wanna show you these side doors. So it has some junk and crud on it. Yeah, I mean, it happens here in the winter, but you push the door, opens that and then closes. So I can't even get in the back of my car right now. It's like this on both sides. Also, something I've never heard anybody else talk about is all of your sensors get covered. So you cannot use autopilot, even when the road's not covered and you can still see the lines on the road, autopilot won't work because all of your sensors and cameras are covered. So yeah, if you wanna buy a Tesla in upstate New York or any place where you actually get a little bit of weather, you're not gonna be able to get in your car and drive it. Just so you know it's not a fluke. I've tried this quite a few times. Can't get in there. I've got luggage and stuff to get out that I can't get in there. So <laughs> what all the Tesla fanboys tell you to do is remote start your car and let it run for an hour. So you bought an electric car to let it run just so you can get in the car to get your stuff or go for a drive. So you're spending money on electricity Maybe it's only six kilowatts you would have used over the course of an hour. So six kilowatt hours. And the average price of electricity is around 13 cents. So really you're only wasting 70-ish cents to remote start your car for an hour. But should you really need to do that? Like right now in my wife's RAV4, I bet you I could open this car and get right into it. Let's try. Oh my God, look at that, a door that actually works. On a car that costs one-tenth of what this Tesla Model X cost me. So it's early in the morning. I'm gonna show you another example of how the Tesla Model X was not built for winter weather. I'm gonna come over here, see if this door opens. I haven't even tried it yet. It is, you can See the snow and stuff falling in here? So this happened to me one time when I was driving somebody to the airport. I was letting them in the door here and they had a bag that had to go in the back. What do you think is gonna happen here? So they're getting in the car. It's moving up. And snow falls in the car. It's actually kind of sticking to the window right now which is good because I really don't want to clean up a mess. But when I did this before, the whole sheet of snow slid right inside the car, covered the entire seat and everything. Yeah, we're lucky right now that it's actually sticking to the window. I'm lucky because I really don't want to clean it up. But you can see how chunks of snow definitely fell inside the car. The car hasn't been warmed up yet. So if it had, all of this glass would be warm and that snow would have just slid right off. So that's why it didn't all just slide it right in here. I just wanted to throw that out there because some of you guys might be watching this and they're not from upstate New York and you don't really know how snow works on a car. But yeah, once the car is warmed up, the snow will slide off. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me. My car's fans are screaming. I felt like in that last clip, it was kind of anticlimactic. You guys probably want to see snow fall into my car and see what it's like. I'm not sure if this will fall, if it'll slide. I just drove about an hour, so a lot of it like had melted and just blew off. But I'm gonna open the trunk and see if this moves. Yeah, there it goes. So this is what I do for you guys, so you don't have to, and you can be aware. And that's just a little bit of snow. And that's only with one door open. And now I have to clean up all of this snow and there's more in the back right there. Just so you know, that's gonna happen if you're in a wintry climate. Not much you can do about it, 
It's just a design of the car. So I'm gonna clean all the snow out before it melts into my seat. I already wiped up a bunch of it, but yes, it gets everywhere. It even gets in the crack for the third row seat. Wish I had a towel. Oh man, the things I do for you guys. It's still very wet, but at least it'll dry and at least a lot of the snow's off. But there's another thing I wanted to show you guys. So I added this mat, and this is just a typical rubber mat you can get from Home Depot, Lowe's. I'm sure you've seen it before. But I cut out the front side so it lined up with the seat rails, and I extended this up pretty far. And in order to get the right cut for all of those, I just traced my 3D Max Spider mats, which are right under here. Obviously they're still pretty dirty, but here's another thing that I found in driving this in winter conditions. These rails right here are really stupid. Like if you have a passenger back here, their feet are gonna be right here and you're gonna have salt and grime and snow and ice all up in this track. And I don't even know where the track goes. Like you cannot lift this up and you cannot get in there to clean it. So ever since I bought this car and I noticed that, I've had a big blanket that I had down here and it wasn't great because it would slide around and people got in and out of the car. So that's why just a few days ago I got this mat and I think it'll be much better and it'll contain and keep all the salt and ice and junk right on top. And then that could vacuum it out with my shop back or something. But these tracks right here are really ridiculous for winter weather. Like it's gonna collect all kinds of crap and then moving your seat forward and back, I imagine it's just gonna push it in further and just, it could even gum up the whole system. Just another reason why these are designed for nice weather. And I feel like they just didn't really think about some things for winter drivers. Another reason this car is not good in the snow. I've been driving around all day and I haven't been able to see through my mirrors because it's just all caked over in ice on both sides. So sure, Maybe you'll say that I should get an ice scraper and I should scrape it off, but I already feel like this car is a Fabergé egg and trying to scrape mirrors, I'll probably scrape off the finish or scratch it. These mirrors already don't fold in. They're always frozen. Like they almost never work in the winter. I'll actually try to get that on film because I haven't included that yet, but yeah, I mean for a hundred thousand dollar car and you don't have heated side view mirrors, that sucks. Like I actually don't even have an ice scraper in my car because I already have to preheat my car just to get into it. So I don't bother to keep a, a scraper in my car. Come on, Tesla, add some heated side view mirrors. I wasn't even planning on making a segment right now. The car is totally clean. I was getting ready to go to the gym and I can't get in my car right now. It's not iced over. A lot of people say, oh, you just gotta remote start the car, melt the ice. There's no ice on this car to melt off. So the door's open a crack, but the window's not going down. It's stuck over the lip. So the only way to do this, from what I found, is you beat on the window. No, that still didn't work. So I'll close that door, maybe. Oh my God door won't close, well, the motor won't, there it goes. We'll open the other one. See what happens. We'll attempt to open the other one. All right, gonna hit the button. Oh, that one worked. Okay, good. So you can see that the window did go down because you can see how that's down a little bit. Oh, I bet you also the mirrors won't work. I'll flip the camera around, we'll give that a try. Okay, so now I'm inside the car. We're just gonna hit this button. You can also hit the mirror button on the MCU in here, but this is easy. I'm gonna put, did not move. I'll hit it again. So now that should be expanded, open, which they are. Push it again. I don't know if you can hear the motors, but <laughs> this is why you can't have your auto folding mirrors turned on while in the winter, because a lot of times they'll either get stuck open or stuck closed or one will be stuck open, one will be stuck closed. Again, there's zero ice or anything on the car. You can see there's nothing really even on the ground. <laughs> it's just cold. It's 19 degrees and they're not working. Uh, can you hear the motors? I'll get you close. They're trying. This car was not made for the winter. 
I've said this before, but it is a Fabergé egg. It looks nice and it's got a lot of features and bells and whistles and all that stuff, but it is a dainty little flower that, <laughs> oh wait, they're starting to move. Oh, that one worked, but that one's still stuck out. So in, stuck out. All right, I'm gonna hit it again. No, that one still does not want to move. Like a dainty little flower. So now the car thinks the passenger door is open. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the car sucked the door in, um, but now I'll have to go out there and screw around with this door so I can leave. I got it. I just had to open and close the door using the screen and uh, the window did actually work and now it's closed and now I can finally leave my house. Yay, Tesla. Well, there you have it. I can't for the life of me understand why more people don't talk about this or complain about it because I can't be the only one having these issues. I know people drive these in the winter, but I've never seen anybody else talk about stuff like this. But now for the positive thing that I told you I was going to tell you about. While driving in the snow, this car is actually a tank. Like it's got through pretty much anything I've driven through. I grew up in the snow, I'm used to this weather, so I know I'm an excellent driver in the snow, but this car drives really, really well when there's snow on the road. I just have the standard all season tires that it came with. My car has like 15,000 miles on it now. So the tires are getting a little bit more worn, but they are doing great in the snow. Normally I get winter tires for all of my cars, but I haven't needed to with this car yet. Probably for next winter, unless I have a, a really good set of all seasons again. But yeah, that's the one positive is that it is just a beast in the snow. I love driving it in the snow because it can just get through anything. So that's one thing that is amazing with this car that I'm very happy about. The other issues suck and they just seem so stupid. But if you want this car, you're going to have to deal with stuff like that. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next one.